practices, and lastly, some alternative monetization revenue opportunities. So why live? Well, first, live gives you the unique opportunity to interact directly and instantly with your fans. So entertainment vloggers like the Merrill Twins, they gain the number of subscribers by creating a streaming show similar to their regular videos. Additionally, live is a completely different format than video on demand. So you can experiment with the possibilities it opens up and lean into the ease of actually producing that live content. Um, Sarah Beth Yoga, where 256k subs, was able to double her weekly content by going live. So she spends two to three hours to produce a live video versus the average 10 to 15 hours to create an on-demand video. Live also unlocks new revenue by providing your fans with opportunities to super chat, send super stickers, and for new members to join. So arcade enthusiast Craniacs with 390k subs, they earned over $5,000 in a single 30-day period through Super Chat alone. So before I, I get started with uh, getting into the really into how to get started with live on YouTube, since this is a 101 class, I would like to give a high-level overview of how an end-to-end -end live uh, would look like. So this can be generalized into the following four components. Basically, signals are captured, they're routed and compressed, and delivered over the internet in a continuous stream of data, which is then viewed by your uh, fans live in real time. First up, we have the audio and video sources. So these are the equipment that deal with capturing audio and video, and includes other assets that will be featured in your stream, such as images, text, recorded media, and so on. So what you'll need to do is feed the output of these audio and video, video sources into your encoder as inputs. Next, we have the encoder. So what an encoder is, is that it converts your content into a digital format to stream on YouTube. So some encoders are software applications on your computer, while others are standalone hardware. So the hardware solution basically is a dedicated appliance which does the capturing and then compresses and converts that audiovisual content into a format that's suitable for uh, streaming and for off recording. In terms of a software solution, it's basically an encoding program that you run on a computing device. So the performance of the stream depends on how well the media can be encoded and transcoded on real time on this e device. So the performance of the device is actually critical. Fundamentally, what you will need to do on the setup process Basically, you need to adjust the video resolution and bitrate settings according to the platform recommendations and also your requirements. And next, you will need to enter the RTMP destination URL and stream keys. So what this, these are basically tells the encoder where to send the feed, which is to YouTube, and how to uniquely identify these feed amongst others on the platform, which is your unique stream key. So this stream key is very unique to this live event and you should keep it uh, private. As, as you would with any other password. And of course, the, the next very critical component is definitely the internet connection. A fast and reliable internet connection is required to produce a very healthy live stream. So given a choice between a wireless and a wired connection, the wired connection is usually the best and most reliable solution. So before um, starting when you're planning your live stream, you can test your internet upload speed to an overseas server on a third-party service such as speedtest.net. Note it's your upload speed and not the, the typical download speed. So yeah, so now that you've understood like the different basic components of live streaming end-to-end, -end, we will now focus on the YouTube platform how you can set it up to receive these media signals that's being sent by the encoder, and how we can help distribute your live content and provide ways to reach and engage with the audience. So let's, let's, let's get started. So before doing anything, you should determine whether you're going to be live streaming via a mobile device or a desktop computer. For an idea on how these two differ, Mobile live streaming lets creators connect and engage with their audience in more immediate ways. So you can go live from nearly any type of device, 
from the main YouTube app. You can engage your viewers in the moment with real-time chat. You can post footage from live stream to your YouTube channel after the live stream ends. You can monetize your live streams with ads and super chats. You can share your live stream link on social media. So this is the most basic live streaming method as all you need is your mobile device. The sound capture and the encoding is all taken care of you by the app and on your phone. And you also need a good internet connection. Meanwhile, there's also desktop live streaming or what we call events, which allows for more complex scenes and third party integrations. So besides these cool unique features, events gives you a greater control of the live stream and you can preview before you go live, you have backup redundancy streams, you can start and stop the stream whenever you want. So pick a, pick a method that works for you. So when getting set up for mobile live streaming, it is important to do the following. One, prep your device. So if you're not on a Wi-Fi wi network, Keep in mind that certain areas like this, they have less mobile signal. So consider your location carefully. So a good rule of thumb is 10 megabytes of data per one minute of stream. And uh, you might want to enable do not disturb because having your stream interrupted by a phone call isn't great. Turn on do not disturb or if you're on Wi-Fi, turn on airplane mode, but with Wi-Fi on. In terms of battery, our rule of thumb is 1% of phone battery per one minute of stream. So make sure you're, you're charged on your phone or use an external battery for longer streams. In terms of orientation, you want to determine whether you want to use a horizontal or vertical orientation for your live stream. Then make sure you lock your, stream, your screen rotation to prevent auto rotation from kicking in midstream. I think uh, I, I've seen several examples where um, where you would actually want to do uh, your stream in landscape mode, but you accidentally started the stream in portrait mode. So make sure before you start your stream, orientate your phone um, the way that you want your, your stream to go up. Next, you'll want to check your audio. The most important factor for good audio is your environment. So find a location with low background noise and echo. If you are in a loud environment, an external microphone can be helpful. So LiPo microphones are the best for isolating a single subject. So a windscreen also help to reduce any wind noise. So many external microphones have them or you can attach like a tiny one that's a, uh, directly onto the mic on your phone. Lastly, you would want to think about having a stable mount. Um, two major factors that affect the stability of your video are both weight and distance from your hand. So you might want to consider a selfie stick or a mini tripod to create a smoother shot. A gimbal is also another alternative. It is basically a weighted or sometimes battery powered device that reduces camera shake. Or you can also stabilize after, after you have archived and published your uh, live stream as a VOD. So we do have you, you can use YouTube's digital stabilizing to make the VOD actually look much smoother. Next, let's watch this video that helps to describe how to start your live stream on mobile. You can live stream from the YouTube app on your mobile device. Before you live stream from your mobile device, your channel needs to have at least 1,000 subscribers and your account must be verified. You can verify your account by going to youtube.com slash verify. To be clear, this verification is different from the verification badge you might see on some channels. To live stream, open the YouTube app, tap the camera button, then press live. If it's your first time, you'll have to grant access to the camera, mic, and storage. If prompted, verify your account. From here, you can choose to stream from your front facing or selfie camera. If you're streaming from an Android phone, you also have the option here to stream your phone's screen. You can now enter the details of your live stream, adjust the privacy setting, add a location, and more. Once you're ready, tap next. You'll see a countdown timer will start. 
When it hits zero, it'll take a picture to use as your thumbnail. If you don't like the picture, you can retake it or upload your own. Once you're happy with the thumbnail, tap go live. During your live stream, you can see your chats, add a filter, share your URL, and more. Once you're done, tap the X in the top right corner, then click OK. A recording of your live stream will eventually be available in your video list. If you're having issues with live streaming, or if you want to learn more about all the features and settings available for mobile live streaming, check out the links in the description. Hope that helped! Alright, so next we will, I hope that uh, video was helpful. So next we'd like to go on to desktop live basics. So when getting started, getting setting up for desktop or event live streaming, it's important to do the following. You would actually want to test your internet connection. Make sure you have good upload bandwidth by speed testing your network. You want to test it repeatedly to ensure that there is actually a consistent range for that speed. Um, the following is what is actually needed per the quality you desire. For example, for standard definition, you will need 3, mega, 3 Mbps. For 720 and 1080p definition, you need 5 to 10 Mbps. For 4K ultra high definition, you need 25 Mbps. So don't worry about taking these numbers down. The recommended bitrate and settings are all available on our YouTube support site if you need, a, if you need to reference it later on. You may also want to consider third-party software. While YouTube offers a comprehensive suite of software tools on platform, there are many types of encoders, and the best one for you depends on your needs. We have the following encoders, which are YouTube Lite Ver Verify. They are Elgato, StageCan, XSplit, Wirecast, Streamlabs OBS. And for a full list, please, please visit our YouTube support site as well. You can also customize your stream as it can help provide a unique and engaging viewer experience. For example, consider the following, creating custom scenes in your encoder. Actually, I do a custom scenes here now by toggling between videos and different um, deck, the deck view and also the camera views. Using third party tools like IFTTT, um, that stands for if this, then that, for audience interactivity. You can also embed your chat or create on-screen visuals for notable moments. That's, that's especially if you're using super chats or for if new members are signing up for your channel. While not all of, uh, while not all of these are necessary to go live, each will help to optimize the experience for your viewers. In terms of one, lighting. So ring lights or professional lighting rings will make a big difference in video quality. Christmas lights or well-placed lamps can also do the trick. In terms of camera and webcam, um, it will allow for capturing of reactions during the stream. For microphone, if you're having some sort of mic to capture audio beyond your computer's default, will improve the stream, providing clearer audio with less background noise. And if you want more advanced tools, a green screen, a dual monitor, a stream deck, can create a polished and professional feel for the stream. So look into these items if you are hoping to bring your production to the next level. And next, let's hear more about how to actually create and start a live stream event on YouTube from your desktop. In this video, I'll show you how to set up and manage live streams in YouTube's live control room. We've built a brand new stream workflow in Live Control Room that combines the best of our classic live streaming creation tools, Stream Now and Events. The new Live Control Room centralizes all of our live creation tools into one easy to use destination for live creators. Based on your feedback, we've added many improved features, some of which we'll walk through today. Before you get started, you'll need to have streaming software installed, also known as an encoder. Your channel also needs to be enabled for live streaming. Click the link in the description if you need help with either of these steps. 
Let's get started with creating a new live stream. Once you're signed in, enter in a title, set your privacy, edit your description, enable monetization, and select the stream's category. You can also choose to schedule the stream at a later time and upload a custom thumbnail. Once you enter this info, click Create Stream. Now let's take a step back. If you'd like to use settings from a previous stream, select Copy and Create. Just like with a new stream, you can modify your stream's details. Click Next to continue. If you've created a new stream, a new stream key will be generated for you. For frequent streamers, you can use the same custom stream key for all your streams. To set up a custom stream key, click this dropdown, then choose Create New Stream Key. In this menu, you can set up a custom name and description. Once you're set, click Create. You can now select this custom stream key in this dropdown. You always have the option of editing your custom stream keys by selecting the Manage Stream Keys option. In this menu, you can change the details of your custom stream keys or choose to delete them. You can manage other settings like latency, DVR, and captions. Now let's connect your encoder to start the stream's preview. Copy the stream key here and paste this into your encoder settings, then start streaming. Navigate back to Live Control Room. Now you should see the stream's preview here. Nice, let's get the stream on YouTube. Click the Go Live button. You're live. You'll see this live icon along with your stream's duration on your preview window. There's quite a bit to Live Control Room, so let's go over the features. The Analytics widget lists real-time data for your stream, including the total number of concurrent viewers, chat rate, playbacks, and average watch time. This graph will show your concurrent viewers over time but you can change this anytime to also see chat rate and playbacks. You can also check your stream's health by clicking this widget, which will give you a real-time status report of your stream. If your channel has Super Chat enabled, this widget will show a running list of people that have purchased Super Stickers and Super Chats during your live stream. Live Control Room now has an option for saving stream highlights. When you click this icon, you can enter the highlights name, then you can quickly scrub through your stream to find a highlight. You also have the ability to publish a video during a stream. If you'd like to edit the highlights metadata at a later time, you can save it as private or unlisted. Once you're finished streaming, click End Stream. You'll get stats from your stream, as well as the ability to trim your live archive and edit the video metadata in YouTube Studio. Finally, let's go over the Manage tab. This will show you all of your upcoming streams. From here, you can edit metadata or change settings of upcoming streams. And that's it. If you want to learn more, please check out the description. And don't forget to subscribe for more YouTube tips and tricks. OK, thanks, everyone. Uh, I see there are a few comments on the chat that uh, you're feeling a little bit lost don't worry these two videos are also on youtube so feel free to go to our, our creator academy youtube channel and feel free to review these two videos again on your own um do the step by step uh, on on the event creation okay next so this is the live control room so once you are live, you'll be directed to this live control room, which has all the tools and analytics you need to run a successful stream, including the preview. Um, your control room will give you a preview of what your stream currently looks like, along with a summary of streams concurrent performance. It will highlight your concurrent viewers, likes, new members added, super chat gained during that stream. Here, you'll also see the current state of your stream. Here we have an excellent connection. In terms of analytics, it will give you a deeper breakdown of your current viewership, 
showing concurrent viewers, chat rate, playbacks, and your average watch time. Below this, you'll see a graph showing how your concurrent viewership has changed over the course of your stream. And on the right side of your control room, you'll see a blue button that lets you end your stream. Please make sure that you are ready that the, to, to, to leave the stream before you click end stream. On the right side, you'll also be able to monitor your chat and send messages yourself. In the top right hand corner of the chat, you can also break up more moderation tools, including adding chat moderators or blacklisting certain keywords. Want to add chat moderators or manage chat while live? Simply click on the name or message of the user you want to moderate. If you'd like to set your channel defaults for these settings, navigate to the Settings tab in the YouTube Studio and then click into the Community tab. I think this is one very important part of this, of this webinar, practice and rehearse. Because rehearsals are a great way to get comfortable on camera and iron out the kinks before launching your new live content. We recommend, firstly, using Unlisted. So this will ensure only those with the stream link are able to tune into your practice stream. So for best results, share with a few close friends or colleagues so they can provide feedback on the content and the technical aspects. The second thing you want to test is the sound and visuals. So different environments and lighting will provide different audio and visual results. So it's important to make sure your background and lighting work once transmitted via your camera and encoder. And reviewing the archive live stream. If you're testing solo, it might be difficult for you to review the footage in real time. So in this case, you might want to archive the stream after the fact and then review it for any issues. Pay particular attention to sound and video quality throughout the video. So if there's one thing you need to remember today, it is to test, it is to rehearse, it is to practice. You need to get very used to the tools that's available on YouTube and also on your workflow, on the encoder, on all your cameras. Make sure that you're very comfortable using them um, before you officially go live on YouTube. So next, I'd like to talk about how you engage your fans on YouTube, on your live streams. So before going live, it's important to review your chat settings, including live chat enablement. So live chat is enabled by default and will appear on the right of the video player when your live stream is active. However, this live chat module only exists on the YouTube watch pages, so it does not follow embedded players. And the live chat is only available if your live stream or chat is not made for kids. So if you are uh, expect a lot of viewers on your live stream, uh, you can enable slow mode. So what slow mode is, it allows you to limit how frequently each user can comment by setting a time limit between comments. So the channel owner, moderators, and YouTube channel members are not affected by this limit. So this is a great option if you expect a high volume of user live chats, which can quickly become quite overwhelming. You can also consider compiling a list of keywords to be automatically blocked in live chat. So this can be helpful if you want to avoid particular topics or prevent trolls from overtaking your chat. You can also have YouTube um, hold potentially inappropriate live chat messages. So if you choose to opt in, Live chat messages that our system identifies will be held for review in the chat feed. So you have to, as the streamer, you have the final decision whether to show or hide these chat messages. But no system is perfect, but this feature can make it easier for you to moderate live chat messages on your live stream. And lastly, live chat moderators. You can assign chat moderators for all of your chat se live chat sessions. I think in my session now, I have Gina and, and Pablo helping me. So moderators will remain on the list until they are unassigned. We strongly recommend that we have at least one dedicated live chat moderator for high traffic events. Moderators can interact with the audience and remove comments when appropriate. They can also flag, hide, or put users in timeout. So once you've got your chat settings in order, it's important to build a plan to guide your live engagement with your viewers. Depending on your format, you want to plan for how you will interact with your audience. Doing a React-style video or, or having or a press conference 
that will likely have a more always-on flow of you constantly checking in with chat and interacting with them. But if you were to do something more like a competition, you might not be able to thoroughly read chat during a competition, so think about when you acknowledge them. Finding natural breaks will allow you to respond directly to fans while keeping your viewers engaged during lulls in the content. And plan beyond just when you'll address and speak to your audience, but think about how you'll, get, you'll keep them engaged. Asking questions or letting viewers influence your action in stream can make them feel more vested in their action. Consider using polls, third-party tools, or even specific chat rituals mentioned above to encourage more interactivity. So when we talk about rituals, it's whether it's an inside joke, a nickname for your viewers, a comedic bit you do at the beginning of every live stream, um, think about what makes live a special experience for your community. Build in moments of familiarity that fans can become a part of and participate in. Maybe it's a particular emoji or phrase your viewers can post in the chat, or maybe it's a ritual of celebrating new members by hashtagging their names. So there's an example of this creator on the right um, that, who opens their Super, Super Mario Maker themed live streams with an improvised song set to the, to the game's beat. Um, I can play a little bit, bit of that for you. I don't know if I can hear this. But. Welcome back to Sin. Super Mario Maker is a story mode. Welcome back. Am I lying? Am I? I'm not. I never know. Wait, where's my mouse? Oh. Uh. Yeah, so, so see, see how this creator basically was... Um, improvising on that that uh, opening part of, of the Super Mario live stream. Yeah. So next, you if you already have a channel, and consider this may be a change in the content that your viewers aren't familiar with if you've not already live streamed before. So you can ease this transition by anticipating how your audience may react to your new format. As with any change in upload schedule or format, you want to communicate your upcoming shift to your audience and set their expectations for what type of content they will see and when they can tune in to get it. Think of your live content as a way to deepen your connection with your core community while using video on demand or live highlights to capture a broader audience. You may also want to avoid overwhelming your audience with uploads by spacing out your VODs and live streams. So if you plan on keeping your archive public, consider waiting to post your next video. And you don't have to go live immediately. Consider scheduling your live stream for a later date or time. If you choose this, we recommend you utilize a handful of best practices. You can create a channel trailer or teaser video to promote that event. You can share your live streaming link at least 48 hours before you go live. You will want to connect your social media accounts to your channel for easy sharing and create a custom post for your subscribers and social media sites. The message will post, including the event link, when the public event goes live. You will, might also want to embed the URL on your website and send the links to blogs which may want to display your content. On your channel, you will want to create a live section to display upcoming and live events and add an associated website to your channel. This will help us improve the quality of search results and verify your channel as official representation of your brand on YouTube. So next we'll talk a little bit about the best practices while you're, while you're live. So viewers really love the ability to directly participate in a stream as it's occurring. Embrace this by allowing them to do the following. Um, vote for an outcome. Right? Give your viewers the chance to vote for a handful of options that directly influence an action or reaction in the stream. So a great way to do this is asking viewers to send a specific emoji or hashtag in the chat for each potential option. For example, to vote for X, you want to put like message with the fire emoji. For option Y, you might ask them to uh, send prayer hands. So, so, so ask, your, ask your audiences. Um, some YouTubers give their audiences even more creative freedom, allowing them to suggest questions for Q&A, provide lyrics for a song they're writing, or challenges the creator should take on. 
and go beyond the chat message by allowing viewers to directly contact the host in real time, like in this example here. Let me play this. Hello! What is happening, everybody? Let me know if you can hear me. <laughs> I think I just got to send this out to Twitter real quick. Uh, just give super duper soon. But I promised everybody on Twitter that I was going to uh, let them know, let everybody know that I was doing this live broadcast. So let me just go ahead and get that tweet out there to everybody <laughs> real quick before uh, we start taking phone calls. Okay, okay, okay. Thank you very much. Now, so basically in this ex in this example here, they're taking phone calls from their fans, which is very interesting. Next, in order to keep a stream dynamic and minimize the amount of dead air, you may want to consider the following. Planning your content in advance. So even having a, like a loose script of what you plan to address on various topics or introduce a specific segment can help keep your stream organized. Um, and this doesn't have to be a one-person show. You can consider enlisting one to three people to help take on some of the responsibilities of your live stream. For example, someone to read and respond on chats, do on-the-spot research, keep track of stream time, you know, look, look after, uh, look after your encoder, all these type of things. You can, you can have different people do, do each of these things. And don't limit yourself to behind the scene help. On-screen co-hosts are another great asset and can help shoulder some of the on-air responsibilities. And unscripted or improvised moments can help keep your stream feeling organic and in the moment. So consider keeping an eye on chat sentiment and verbalizing as necessary. So this is particularly important if you've reached a moment of your stream that's likely to generate a high engagement. For example, you're executing an epic trick shot, is a hot take on a, on a specific topic, or if you're approaching a big play in a multiplayer match. So be sure to call out the audience's response and directly integrate that energy into the stream itself. Don't be afraid to lean into bloopers, unexpected moments, for example, you might miss a, like, a jump in game or you knock something over in a camera, things don't work. But chat memes, might, they might come up midstream. While they, they may throw off your scheduled programming, they might push your content into moments that are too good to be scripted. And after your stream, you can expand your content's reach by continuing to promote and feature your live moments by creating highlights. So consider editing down some of your best live moments into more digestible highlight reels to reach a broader audience. So these broadly appealing videos can act as an anchor to expose new audiences to your live streams. After the live streams, you can create FOMO if you're missing out and reward viewers in attendance with recaps, inside jokes, or shoutouts on the community tab. So continued references to these stream moments will create incentives for viewers to be present in future live streams. And if you're archiving, archive appropriately. Consider creating playlists for each of your archive streams in a fashion that makes the most sense for your audience, for example, by topic or by season. Place these playlists on your channel homepage and promote them in highlight clips from each of your live streams. And, la and next, we will want to talk a little bit about alternative monetization. How do you make money with live? Uh, besides the usual ad-based monetization under our partnership programs, there are additional ways in which you can monetize your content. So the following products are subject to availability in your vertical country or region. It will be best to check in the, con in the hub center if this is available to you at this time. So firstly, consider Super Chat and Super Stickers. Basically, they allow viewers to purchase these brightly colored pinned chat messages or stickers during your live streams and premieres. So when using them, remember that viewers use Super Chat to stand out from the crowd, right? With this in mind, be sure to thank these viewers who send Super Chats via shoutouts or on-screen graphics. Whenever possible, try to integrate the conversation into the content itself, putting these viewers into the driver's seat. 
and inform these viewers where this money is going and let them see the results firsthand. And if you have an active memberships program, which allow, basically is a monthly, monthly program uh, where viewers can pay a certain amount to be a, a member to your channel, you can integrate some of these offerings directly into your live streams, including members only chat. If you're a seasoned streamer, enabling members only chat is a great way to amplify members chat while still making content available um, and accessible to those that aren't members. So non-members can also interact with you by sending super chat messages if, if, you, if you have that enabled, making it a great additional revenue opportunity. Members only live streams are a great way to have a more intimate and le but maybe you can have a less polished interaction with viewers. So if you aren't used to live streaming, this can be a lower pressure way to experiment by just opening the stream to members. Custom badges and emoji will allow your most loyal fans to stand out from the rest of the crowd in chat. So consider leaning in into inside jokes, memes, visual comedy to add authentic authenticity and value to this custom work. And lastly, live streams also provide a variety of merchandising integration opportunities, such as pinning your merch, merch to the top of your live stream, uh, live chat while streaming. So as seen on the example on the right, um, you can pin, pin your merch on top of the live chat and providing a built board direct to these viewers in the chat. Right, so you can see on the right over here. So these viewers who aren't looking at the chat can also easily see your merch offering in merch shelf that's right below your stream. And finally, you can direct viewers to check out the store tab on your channel page following the end of your stream. So please do check out um, the, our YouTube support site and see if each of these features are actually available to you at this time. Especially for merchandising, if it's actually available to you, you'll actually be notified in your channel itself. And lastly, I just want to also give you a very, very, very quick summary of the live features on our platform, which might, you might be interested to know. So in terms of technology, um, these are the things that we support. We support a higher definition with transcoding, which is up to 4K, and YouTube creates these alternative resolutions to help you scale across all devices and bandwidth. So you don't really have to be bothered by how, how much bandwidth your end users have. Um, for the faster frame rates, for smoother video playback experience, you can stream in 60 FPS. That I think for gamers, this is um, particularly uh, important, and 30 FPS. You can also stream with low latency options, which allow you to balance stability with getting the feed out to your viewers quickly. Um, as I've mentioned previously, you can automatic automatically create uh, VOD archives and off from your stream content to your channel um, as long as they're below 12 hours long. And from within the live control room, you can use, you can create shorter edited version of the live stream as it happens. So as, as the stream happens, let's say you have a 12 hour live stream, you can actually create the small highlights and that will be uploaded directly to your channel as VOD so you can attract additional viewership for, for everyone else who isn't tuning into the live stream right now. And we also support 360 degree and multicam streams. So you can stream with 360 degree video or 180 VR or multi camera angles. One thing, to, uh, one thing that you might be interested to know is there is no limits on the number of live events that you can create on your channel and that you can live stream simultaneously. If you want to do more than one live stream at a time, for example, if your stream, uh, if your channel caters to, and you have a lot of uh, um, people, uh, talents who can stream at the same time, feel free to do so. And there's no limits on how long you can stream if, you, you, if you're lo not looking for an archive. So we all also have several examples of 24 by seven live streams, especially from our news partners. In terms of insights and reporting, uh, the most recent metrics for the last 24 hours can be found in your live control room. So right away, you can check the number of playbacks and concurrent viewers during the event. And the metrics are also available in YouTube analytics for the 8 to 72 hours after the live stream ends. So you can sort through the VOD and live data and choose through different reports available. 
um, one common question um, is around discovery and promotion. Like, how do I how do I get get my stream more easily discovered, or how do I promote box um, subscribers that ring the bell they get push notifications when you go live you can uh, your live streams can be featured on top of up next video and across any of your VOD content when viewers are watching we once you go live we provide additional badging across YouTube so that little red live now icon I of badge will show up in search results recommended up next YouTube channel so it really grabs the attention of someone browsing YouTube and of course, you also ha can have paid media strategies to help you promote this live stream <clears throat> and VOD content to valuable YouTube audiences. Um, so it might be the first live stream that you're doing that you want to promote. And once you get that stable audience coming back, uh, you, you might not need to do this anymore. I think one, one important thing here is the call to action when you create your live event on YouTube. So you, want, you would want to create your live event in advance and promote your URL. So users can actually come in and set a reminder. So once they do that, they will be notified as, as and when you go live. So this is, this is a great way to promote and keep, keep your users coming back when you actually go live. And lastly, I just wanted to show you some recent examples given... Uh, Okay, sorry, a little, have a, yeah, I do have some examples, but I have some, some stuff on the slide, but, but basically there are several examples of what other partners have been um, doing on the YouTube platform during this period of COVID-19. One particular example is hosting your live shows from home. Um, so we have a um, late night show hosts uh, in the US. So they've all transitioned to working from home. They're starting to host their live shows straight direct from your living room. Um, and these and these are great ways to continue engaging their audiences on live. Um, if the, then they can continue to have guests by by having them call into a video conference, right? And even locally in our region, um, in the Philippines, we've seen that done uh, with our, our Filipino broadcasters as well. Um, we you, you don't actually need uh, need like a super fancy um, solution there. You could, in, in one of the examples that I've shown earlier, you can actually get them to call in, call you via your phone, do a video call. Um, all of that is, is it, it, it really works. So for live content, it doesn't need to be of high production value. Um, the, the other example I wanted to give was on live streaming of concerts and theater productions and and, and other things like this, because right now we're in all countries we're kind of in a different level of lockdown or shelter in place. So many of these um, concerts, theatre performances, they, they can't happen anymore. And, and we will want to engage this audience, continue to engage your fans um, during this period as well. So what they've done is they've started live streaming their concerts on YouTube. Um, this could be live, like happen real time or this could be previous concerts that you have, you have not you have not uploaded online that you're streaming for making available for the first time on live so we've also seen really uh long live streams as well nine to twelve hours it's really over the weekend and that's a really really great way to also find new um, fans during this period because they can hop in and out at any time during the day or night okay and to wrap up, uh, to recap, uh, basically what we've gone through today. Um, so number one, you want to make the choice between desktop or mobile and, and get familiar with your basics. And then you want to also plan your live schedule and program out your content for upcoming streams. Is it just going to be one specific time pool or is it going to be a series of, of content they're going to put up? And three, you want to check your settings and prepare a chat plan for your future streams and integrate the live best practices into your content and have a plan for archiving the streams once complete. And remember, if there's one word you need to remember today, it's test. Please remember to test and to rehearse. So, yeah, so I've gone through the material for today. Um, let me just go into the uh, Q&A um, and see what questions you have.
So I've seen my fans, thanks Ray for this question. I've seen my fans making monetary contribution during my live streams, but I don't know where did they go, AdSense or some other location. So if you've been making, uh, if, if it's Super Chat, Super Stickers, um, memberships, they'll basically be going to your AdSense account. So please, please check on your AdSense account to see whether you're getting um, these. Uh, yeah. Uh, so just going through this list. So in the classic studio, we can download the reports right after the stream. How can we do it in the new studio? Ah, good question. So we're currently in a transition phase. So you've, some of you might have seen uh, the new live control room, and that's the interface that you've seen in the video earlier. Um, but we have we're still in the process of moving a lot of these features over as well. And the reports, uh, the downloadable report, is actually one of them. So if you actually need one of these reports, you might have to exit back. So there is an exit um, exit link. Just exit back to what we call classic live control room, and and you should be able to download your reports from there. Um, don't worry if if we do not uh, we won't deprecate the live control room yet. Uh, we're still moving these features over, but please get used to the new studio because because that's what we're going to be uh, using moving forward. So anonymous question: Can you do split screens while doing live? So basically, if you're able to do it on the production level, definitely. Because what, what YouTube takes in is basically one screen, one feed. If you're able to do your production or, or mixing prior to that, um, then yeah, uh, YouTube, YouTube will support it. I think what you're asking is probably looking for is probably third party tools that can make that easier for you. Um, there are some third party tools out there. Um, so you might want to do some, some, uh, investigation like you can also look on youtube there are several creators also talking about how to execute on these type of live streams as well so i have a question from anonymous which third party software do i recommend unfortunately i'm not i cannot recommend any third party software i think it really depends on what you need um and yeah it really depends on what you need um there are, we do have a few um, third-party services on our support side. So these are uh, partners that might be verified or that we've previously worked with. But really, just do your research. Um, see what other creators are using. See what other partners are, are using. Try it for yourself and see whether it works for you. What we recommend might not work for you depending, depending on your need. So does Zoom consider as an encoder of streaming software? So the thing about Zoom is that it is it it, it is an encoder for itself. Um, it probably does not take in any. I'm, 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 so I have to preface this: I am not an expert on Zoom, so I don't use Zoom at all. But it's probably an encoder that it's for its own meetings. Um, so that that I I think there is a. Um, a live streaming capability. So I'm not super sure. So, so, yeah. But but basically, yeah. It, it probably might have its own enco encoder services on it, but probably not flexible enough for you to to put in any other third party um, imagery or audiovisual inputs. Are there delays between the presenter and the audience? Um, there, there are. So I talked a little bit about latency options. So there's three different types of latency options on YouTube. Um, there's normal, there's ultra low, uh, there's low and ultra low. So if you use the normal, normal uh, latency, there is a delay of usually about 30 seconds. So what happens is first the feed that you, you're pushing out from the encoder needs to reach YouTube. It then needs to be transcoded. So if you're giving us 4K video, it's going to take a longer time to transcode uh, and manipulate into those lower resolutions for distribution. So just expect some delays, especially if you're giving us HD, uh, HD uh, audio visuals. Um, and we're also trying to distribute it globally for you so that your viewers have a really nice experience, even if, let's say, you might get some hiccups on your end as a streamer. So, but if you want to really minimize that delay and you don't 
and buffering is not really a concern to you, you might want to track try out the low and ultra low latency options. Um, basically, there is still some delay, but it will be much lower, probably about less than five seconds. But um, yeah, that basically you're, you're sacrificing stability or buffering with uh, a, shorter, a shorter delay, a shorter latency. So see what, 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 what fits you. If you're, if you're doing as, if you're expecting a really global um, live stream and a, something they're expecting a high viewership from, I would actually re recommend normal because that just makes it more stable. Recommended internet speed connection. I think um, we do have that recommendation in our support site depending on what resolution that you want to stream at. So just make sure that when you do a speed test that your upload speed is comfortably um, more than than what is required for let's say the, the the resolution that that you're expecting so what if someone good question from anonymous what if someone got a unique key or link and you do not want them to see your live event um yeah so on youtube we're basically a, a public streaming platform so there are three visibility states. One is public, where everyone, anyone can find it. Secondly is unlisted, where someone, if given a URL, someone, like this live stream, if given a URL, someone can actually ex access it. Or a private live stream, um, where you can actually, uh, it is private to you. And uh, yeah, so given that if someone got your unique key and link and you re you don't want to make it available to them unfortunately you might have to actually turn turn it public uh private um because there isn't a, a way to specifically like block a user um from viewing this specific video another anonymous question is it correct that you need to have 1000 subs before you can do live so you can do live as long as you verify your account with a on on on, on your channel. So you can do live as long as you verify, but if you want to use the mobile app to live stream, then you'll need 1,000 subscribers. But if let's say you're, you're okay using events, you're okay using desktop live streaming, um, that's available to you. You do not need the 1,000 subscriber. If you go live on mobile, can you fix the backend stuff via desktop? I was able to do this before the lockdown for Facebook live streaming. Wanted to know if YouTube had something similar. Um, so when, so for YouTube was slightly different. So if if you want to go live on mobile, you need to create your live event from the mobile live itself. So let's say if I want to schedule a mobile live event uh, this weekend then please create that live event from the mobile phone and not from your desktop and vice versa. Um, because right now, the way is that it on, on YouTube is currently separate. Um, you might, yeah, you might still be able to see the, the control room, but you'll probably not limit, be lim quite limited on what you can actually do in, from the control room on desktop if it's a, a, a mobile live stream. So it's live control room only for desktop live streaming. Um, I'm, yeah, this, okay, I, I'm not super duper sure um, about this one, but live control room, you can definitely access your desktop created events. For mobile created events, you'll probably see a li if at all, you might probably see very, very limited features or, or things that you can edit on. on. So if, if, I, if the, the question is how you can edit your mobile live streaming, um, just please do that from, from your mobile. So from Eric, um, will there be a mo YouTube moderator moderating these live streams? Uh, there will not be. <laughs> it, um, we will not be moderating um, your live streams. At, I'm guessing it's live streams that you're doing, um, but no, the, these are self-nominated moderators, so you can choose your own moderators. Um, and YouTube as a third party will not be moderating this for you. Ah, I'm so sorry, um, we're running out of time. So I uh, thanks for all the questions. Unfortunately, I'm not able to get to them. Um, 
but let me wrap up. Uh, we will we will try to compile these questions and and hopefully answer them. And and Pablo and and Gina might be able to help me on that. Um, so yeah, thank you for your time today. Really really glad to have all of you here. Um, if if you could uh, mark your attendance and share your feedback via this URL on the screen right now, that will be really, really great. Tell us how we did. Tell us if this was useful for you. Um, if you want to see more of this or if you want to see something else or if you're interested um, in the other of uh, many of our other sessions, please let us know.